Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Devil's Advocate Live. I'm Dan Capello. And I'm Mike Martucci. We have a fantastic lineup of stories for you tonight, highlighting local events, student voices, and community spirit. Let's dive right in. First up, juniors and seniors are getting a taste of what their futures might hold. The counseling department hosted a college fair that connected students with representatives from colleges, trade schools, and the military. With about 20 institutions in attendance, students have the chance to explore some of the opportunities available to them. Thursday, October 24th, HHS transformed its Gym A into a hub of opportunity, hosting a college fair for juniors and seniors. You gotta include every student. Some, school, some students run to go to college right away. Some students really aren't sure what they wanna do. So we try to give them every angle to look at. The trade schools, I mean, there's people making fantastic money, you know, going right into a trade right away. We want our kids to be able to explore that. And what the armed services can provide for our students for life when they can give back to our country, we want to show them that through this fair today. Colleges, trade schools, and the military present, students had a chance to gather information and ask questions about their future. The fair showcased a diverse range of options. Automotive Training Center offers five different options in schooling. Automotive, diesel, high performance, collision, and marine. I can speak for all branches, but also the Army National Guard. So the branches they're all going to offer you an opportunity for obviously career advancement. They're going to give you a, a, an actual skill that you can either directly transfer to the workforce or you can go to education, you can get a college degree. It was clear that the college fair was more than just an event. It was a stepping stone towards a brighter future for many aspiring students. Um, it, was a lot of, it was very interesting to see all the different schools here, some that I haven't explored before, so it was helpful to get some information on those places. This just helped me because you get to see all the options right in front of you, so you can just go around and see everything all at once and what they have to say. I do it prepared because I've looked at all the options and narrowed it down to what I want to do. But follow your heart always. Do what makes you happy, and you should succeed then whatever you choose. For the Devil's Advocate, this is Zane Marshall signing off. It's great to see students taking such proactive steps towards their futures. Planning for the future is important but it's also meaningful to reflect on the past and our heritage. The World Language Department uh, hosted members of our Lady Mount Carmel Society who shared a presentation that showcased our rich Italian heritage of our community. The event featured local information about the summer festival and Italian reception in the media center to celebrate the culture that has been part of Hamilton's fabric for generations. In honor of Italian Heritage Month, Members of the Our Lady of Mount Carmel Society spoke to Italian students about Hamilton's strong ties to Italian culture and the vibrant tradition their annual festival celebrates each summer. For Lou Pantalone, it's not just a cultural tradition, it's a family one. I'm very proud that my grandfather was a member of the society. Uh, he was actually one of the ones that built the Mount Carmel Hall, my dad. He was in the society, so he, he's a past president. So family is very important, and our faith is, is, is extremely important in preserving what our ancestors did to make it so uh, valuable of a tradition to maintain. Hamilton wasn't founded by Italians, but many settled here, and other groups soon followed. That helped foster a lot of uh, different uh, cultures coming into the town. One of the things that we see about all of that is that they do unite, they do have faith, they are family oriented. Um, so that's, that's important and that's what fosters a really good uh, environment within the town of Hamilton. It's a very small town, but a very close town. World Language Supervisor Amy Claus recognized the importance of hosting events like this at the high school. For our World Language Department, we thought it's important to celebrate all of our uh, language programs uh, here at Hamilton High School. After the presentation, students enrolled in Italian classes enjoyed the reception, celebrating the culinary delights of Italy, made possible by the contributions of several local businesses. It was really interesting to hear some of the stories from the Mount Carmel Society because, you know, I've been going to the feast my whole life and uh, I drive a tractor in the procession every year. It was really cool to hear a little bit about the history and you know, why it means so much to our town. And the presentation made me think about the opportunities I have to go out with my family and friends and enjoy myself, but also learn about how much the Italian heritage has influenced and impacted the Hamiltonian community. From history to customs, the event was an engaging reminder of how heritage continues to shape 
and unite our vibrant community. One. It's important to celebrate and preserve our cultural roots, and this event did just that. In sports, the Hamilton field hockey team dedicated their recent game to Morgan's Message, an organization that raises awareness about mental health. Players wore special jerseys and honored Morgan's Message through various initiatives, promoting mental health awareness and support for students in need. Hamilton High School is taking a stand for mental health awareness with a special dedication during the field hockey game. The newly formed club, Morgan's Message, aims to create a supportive community for students and raise awareness about mental health challenges. Our whole mission is to bring awareness to mental health for student athletes and sometimes we forget that athletes have a lot of pressure. They're up at 6 in the morning, they go till 8 o'clock at night, and then they come home to a plethora of uh, homework and responsibilities in their families. Morgan's message was established in honor of Morgan, a young athlete whose story highlights the importance of mental health and sports in everyday life. The club seeks to foster open conversations and provide resources for students who may be struggling. So this is really important to me, and especially being um, an athlete my entire life and be meeting a lot of different people um, and hearing about all of their experiences. You know, this is all too common um, in athletics is these kind of mental health struggles, and they're not talked about enough. Today we're doing our first ever Morgan's Message dedication game. Um, we're dedicating today's game to the life and legacy of Morgan Rogers. She was a former Duke University lacrosse athlete who died tragically in July of 2019 after battling mental health struggles. Um, although Morgan's life was cut way too short, um, her legacy of unconditional love remains. Morgan's message was created by her family and former teammates with the mission to eliminate the stigma surrounding mental health. And as a coach, we get to spend a lot of extra time outside of the classroom with a lot of our athletes. We're with them three hours a day, typically after school for just practice, and then we're with them over the summer, some of us. And then on game day, sometimes we're with them for five to six hours after school. And it allows us to build a relationship where we are easy, we can easily see whether they're on or off. And on those off days, it, because it's so noticeable to us, it allows us to have that conversation and open up the door to say, hey, what's going on? Is something up? Is something happening at school today? I've noticed the last couple of days you've been off. You know, do you want to share? Do you need anything? How can I support you? And because we're able to build that relationship, it makes that conversation just a little bit more comfortable than it typically would be, I think. This game serves as a platform for spreading this important message. Players wore shirts during warm-ups to tribute Morgan on their jerseys, symbolizing unity and support for Nobody's going to read upside down. First, you are human, uh, and then you are an athlete. The t-shirts are definitely something to generate a lot of uh, conversation, and I think that's what, what's been happening today. Two, one. Such a wonderful way to show support for mental health, especially in today's world. Also in athletics, Hamilton have proudly pro hosted the Atlantic County cross-country championships earlier this month at Hamilton Lake Park. The event brought together teams across the county, showcasing their exceptional talent and teamwork on the trails. Wait, is that it? Is the outro? Oh, I mean, anytime you can host, you know, up to over 200 student athletes in one event, uh, you know, it's really a good opportunity to showcase, you know, what in this sense our, our uh, Hamilton Lake Park has to offer, what our town has to offer. Uh, you know, what our school and programs and uh, student athletes have to offer. We love having this meet. Uh, this goes back history-wise, back to like the 80s. We finally revived uh, the event, brought it back to uh, Hamilton, and yeah, it's just a staple of our season. Uh, but we love having it here. It's, uh, it's amazing to see. We got food trucks out. Everyone seems to love coming. Having this event here uh, is just such like a core part of the Hamilton Cross Country team. We had 12 schools uh, register and uh, 218 total athletes between boys and girls JV and then uh, varsity, boys and girls varsity as well. Just a couple of our like rivals, uh, Absagami, the prep is here, um, Cedar Creek, uh, amongst others. It was very cool having a lot of spectators here because normally like people don't really come to cross country meets because they're far. Teams seem to love it. I mean, you were here, you got to hear the enthusiasm of everybody cheering it on and everything, so it was a great day. It was nice because it was on our home turf, so we know everything, like we know the course inside and out. And overall, it was a good race. Like we all ran great as a team. A lot of PRs today. I cannot overstate how proud I am of my team. I mean, every single one of these guys, they have just come so 
long and far. A lot of the varsity guys will carry on, so we have our uh, Cal Conference meet, that'll be at EHT next week, and then after that we have sectionals over at Dream Park, and then that's about it, unless anybody pops in like the top 10 as an individual, uh, then they can move on to states and kind of move on from there. You know, we take running something like this, the Atlantic County Championships, uh, you know, really, you know, seriously, and, uh, you know, we hope we came through and, and provided a nice uh, day for everybody. Congrats to all the athletes who competed. Now let's switch gears and talk about everyone's favorite topic, school lunches. We hit the hallways to find out what students really think about their cafeteria offerings. From pizza to mozzarella crunchers to orange chicken, there's something for everyone to enjoy. Every school has its heroes, but here at HHS, the real star doesn't play on the football field or shine in the classroom. Nope, it's right here in the cafeteria. Don, what is your favorite school lunch? I like the uh, mozzarella crunchers. Danielle, what's your most favorite school lunch? Pizza on Fridays. To say uh, corn dogs and beans, best lunch of all time. Mozzarella crunchers. Why is mozzarella crunchers your favorite school lunch? Um, because they're really crunchy and they're good. Lauren, what's your favorite school lunch? Pizza dippers. Your most favorite school lunch? I like the breakfast, like French toast and stuff. Brianna, what's your favorite school lunch? Or chicken. Out of almost 11,000 meals served at that school in September, 602 of them were orange chicken. Lily, what's your favorite school lunch? Um, orange chicken, definitely. What makes orange chicken better than all the other school lunches? Um, I feel like it's the most real food and it doesn't taste fake. Like For the devil's advocate, this is Joe Galliano. It's always fun to hear what keeps the lunch trays moving. And before we go, let's talk school spirit. The homecoming pep rally was back and it was bigger than and louder than ever. Students and athletes uh, packed the gym to cheer on our athletes, dance team, and band as we gear up for the big game. Hamilton High School hosted its much anticipated fall homecoming pep rally and the atmosphere was nothing short of electric. Students and faculty packed the gymnasium ready to kick off the homecoming festivities with school spirit and excitement. It's pretty cool, I like it. Um, I think there's a lot of energy going on and there's some good activities that we're going to do. I like when we walk in here and all of them like chant the music and stuff pretty cool. Uh, first impression looks good and all that. Um, I feel a lot of energy here already, I can see, and I think it's going to be a nice, nice fun one today. It makes our school come together and it gets them all excited at the same time, so everybody's all happy. It's, it's vibrant, very vibrant, loud, energetic, spirited, fun. Games such as musical chairs, tug of war, and dodgeball were crowd favorites. I like tug of war, I like seeing everyone pitted against each other, I think it's interesting, and it curates a nice rivalry. Dodgeball is just fun. Everyone loves dodgeball. The experience is a lot different for upperclassmen, as they have now experienced multiple pep rallies during their time at HHS. Well, getting the no, like the go home freshman chance, not getting those anymore are kind of cool. I feel like freshman year and sophomore year, I was kind of scared. I was scared of all the upperclassmen. I thought they were mean. This year, I kind of like being a hater. I like hating on the lower classmen. It's definitely like better. Nobody's screaming "Go home, freshmen!" and like it's more fun. You know how it goes. You're not like nervous. For this year's seniors, the pep rally was bittersweet, as only two more remain before graduation. I'm definitely gonna miss it because it's a lot of fun. It brings the whole school together, and you can play in a lot of games, and it's just good for the school. You know, there's a mix of emotions. I was excited to you know move on. But also, you know, it's a chapter that you know you're going to close, and you're not really going to see again. So it's uh, it's fun, it's exciting, but it's also a little sad. These events don't plan themselves. Student council officers put in a lot of work planning and setting up each pep rally. We use a lot of games that we've used in like past years, but sometimes we'll send videos that we see on TikTok or Instagram, and we'll be like, "Hey, this looks like a really fun idea. Like we should do something like that." We just pick what's most fun, and we think most people want to watch and participate in. I can't lie, it's kind of stressful, but honestly, it's really fun, like, choosing everything, getting people to sign up, um, like, right now, like, helping with everything, it's just really fun. It's a little stressful. This was my first one, and it was a lot of running around. It's very hard to get people to want to participate, but we did. At a pep rally, like, you don't really have to worry about anything, like, you can just, like, listen to music, have fun, like, talk to your friends. I just feel like it's a really fun event. And it's really great to have it in school, and it just makes everyone happier. 
Pep rallies are certainly some of the most energetic events of the year, as this great event continues to promote school spirit and community here at HHS. For The Devil's Advocate, this is Matthew Donio and Robert Guyland. It was great to see everyone coming together to celebrate Go Blue Devils! That wraps up our show today. Thanks for joining us for The Devil's Advocate Live. Be sure to tune in next time for more stories from our community. Happy fall break, everyone.